The other day I was sitting on my computer with both of my dual monitors, just filled with beautiful Italian motorcycle art, comparing two motorcycles, the Ducati Monster and the MV Agusta Brutale. You know how you just sit around and look at motorcycles that are completely out of your reach and pretend like it's actually possible for you to even consider buying them? Well that's pretty much what this was. Anyways, this little session of gazing at motorcycles got me thinking, what if we could go deeper than just these two motorcycles? What if we could compare these two companies as a whole and really see who wins? and who's better. So that's what we're doing today in the first of hopefully many episodes of what I'm calling the Motorcycle Company Showdown. And like I said, we're pitting two Italian motorcycle companies up against each other, both with long illustrious histories of racing and engineering and design. We've got Ducati and MV Agusta. Also, the main thing I'm going to be doing is pitting the motorcycles that they actually make against each other. But if one company makes more motorcycles or is in segments that the other is not in at all, we won't be focusing on those bikes. Just the ones that are in the same segments, basically the bikes that are competitors in some form. So for Ducati and MV Agusta, those motorcycles are adventure motorcycles, naked motorcycles, hyper naked motorcycles, and actually that's it. I was gonna add sport motorcycles, but as we'll talk about a little bit later, it really doesn't work. And we're gonna be pitting these two companies against each other in these four categories, performance, styling, options, and price. Now I know there are many other aspects like service and quality, and maybe we'll talk about those things along the way, but when you're actually comparing the models, these are really the topics that matter. Overall quality of the build is just something that's gonna be across the entire range of motorcycles for the most part. And in this case, we're looking at two companies that really do focus on quality and like just an attention to detail. So those are the four topics, let's jump right in. Now, comparing Italian adventure bikes is a bit weird, but the reality actually is that Ducati has positioned itself with the Multistrada as having one of the best, highest performing adventure bikes that you can buy, producing up to 170 horsepower for the highest end models and having quite a few different options. Now, most wouldn't know this, but MV Agusta also has an adventure bike that really is quite interesting, especially in terms of design. So let's look at these two bikes, the Multistrada and the Turismo Veloce. For performance, there's really no question that Ducati wins. The Turismo is essentially just the 800cc triple that MV Agusta uses in almost all of their motorcycles, and in this case, it's the lowest horsepower version that you basically can get in the Brutale and Dragster Rosso versions. Still respectable for middleweight adventure bike, 110 horsepower, arguably enough for virtually all adventure bike riders, but the Multistrada just wins because it not only has a lower horsepower version with the 950S, but it goes all the way up to 170 horsepower with the V-Engine platform, so you just have a ton more options when it comes to performance and you do have these super high performing bikes. The Turismo Veloce isn't a bad adventure bike, it weighs a fair amount less, but not enough to make up for that range of power available on the Multistrada, so for me, the Multistrada wins in the category of performance. For styling, I'm going to give it to MV here. The Turismo Veloce is really a unique take on what an adventure bike can look like. MV, as we'll see, always puts design as like one of its top priorities. And the Multistrada for me really looks more like a traditional adventure bike, which isn't bad, but in terms of just styling, I personally would pick the MV. This one's obviously subjective, but personally, that's the one I would take. Now, when it comes to options, the Multistrada actually wins again, not only because it has more power options, like we said, but also because it's different variations like the Enduro, for example, really do cater to different kinds of riders, whereas the Turismo options are really just differences in style. And the last category for this, I'm again gonna have to give it to the Ducati. As for the prices, they are relatively close across the range, except with MV, you're paying more, but you're not getting any sort of upgrade in performance like you do with the Multistrada. So the highest end Multistrada is actually less than the highest end Turismo Veloce. And as we saw, the Turismo isn't an upgrade in performance like the Ducati is. So a 170 horsepower machine with all the bells and whistles costs less than MV Agusta's highest end adventure model that still only produces 120. 
110 horsepower. So for me, Ducati wins on the adventure bike segment. We'll see how things change for MV down the road and whether or not they choose to invest more in upgrading this bike as they have with their other models, which does bring us to the next category, which is the naked motorcycle, or as I'm gonna call it, the street naked motorcycle. So this category is really important for both Ducati and MV. And for this, again, I'm calling it the naked street bike. Technically, the more horsepower bikes that they have would fit into the you know term naked street bike. But for this, we're looking at their smaller displacement, like sort of middleweight or even, you know, heavyweight, but not like super heavyweight naked street bikes. We'll talk about the heavyweights in a minute. In terms of performance, MV's range of Brutale and Dragsters minus the Hyper Nakeds is really in that group. They go all the way from 110 horsepower with the Dragster Rosso and the Brutale Rosso all the way up to 150 horsepower for the Dragster RC. Now Ducati has the classic Monster which currently goes from 111 horsepower virtually the same as the Rosso versions, up to 147 horsepower. I know there's more to performance than just horsepower. Obviously handling is a factor, but for my purposes, it's really the main thing we're gonna look at. And weight is also another thing that matters. The lowest end power for the MV actually weighs a good amount more than the Monster with similar horsepower. But what's crazy is that the MV Dragsters and Brutale, when they get up to the 140 and 150 horsepower versions, they don't weigh anymore. In fact, the RC weighs less. So relatively similar performance on the smaller horsepower bikes, but significantly better performance for the MV Agustas on power to weight ratio when it comes to their little bit bigger bikes or just like a little bit faster bikes. And that's where I think MV really beats Ducati. For me personally, and I think just looking at the stats, MV beats out Ducati when it comes to performance rather handedly. The Dragster and all of its iterations and the Brutale and its iterations, in my opinion, is a higher performing machine than the Ducati Monster when it comes to power and weight. And as far as I've seen about handling, it also is sort of right in the same mix with the Monster. Now, in terms of styling, for me, again, the MV Agusta wins in this segment with ease. Like I said before, this is just preference but I think that at this point MV is taking more risks in terms of design and just making more interesting looking bikes than Ducati. Some have said Ducati is like Ferrari and that Aprilia is like Lamborghini to Ducati's Ferrari and I really think it's not Aprilia that should be considered Lamborghini. I think it's MV Agusta. MV is the brand that is going out of their way to make really crazy but also beautiful motorcycles. So personally, I would take an MV over a Lambo any day, although financially it would probably make more sense to take the Lambo. But yeah, MV's smaller naked bikes are just more appealing in terms of looks than the Monster at this point, especially with the update to the Monster. It's just really not my cup of tea. It's not as interesting as it was before in terms of design. Now let's look at options. Again, when it comes to options, it's close, but I'm actually going to give it to MV Agusta again. To be real, MV's middleweight naked class all rocking this triple engine they're quite compelling and even for what you're paying they're not a bad deal there's tons of tech on them it's somewhat all over the place mv has some insane tech you know but it is lacking a few things that ducati has but just in terms of options for color and design and aesthetic, I think that MV Agusta has more to offer. So MV has won three of the four segments when looking at these sort of middleweight naked street bikes. So technically they've already won, depending on what matters to you, maybe price is really all that matters. And if that's the case, the monster does actually make more sense. The monster does win on price. All of the MV models in this segment are a few thousand more than the monster counterpart. So Ducati wins with ease. But again, when you're looking at an exotic Italian motorcycle, and this is the segment you're interested in, price may not be the most important factor. And if it isn't, then in my opinion, MV Agusta wins. Okay, next we have the Hyper Naked Bikes. Now this one is going to be interesting because this really has been a focus of both the companies and it's not simple picking between the two. For this, we're comparing the Rush 1000 and the Brutale 1000 RR made by MV Agusta, and we're comparing them with the Ducati Street Fighter in all of its iterations. So in terms of performance, all of these motorcycles, the Street Fighter, the Brutale 1000RR, and the Rush 1000, they all produce exactly 
208 horsepower, according to their numbers, with Ducati using their V4 engine and MV using an inline four. Now the Ducati has a dry weight of 397 pounds and also a 392 pound dry weight for their like specced up model. Whereas the MV Agusas weigh 410 pounds, now somewhat negligible, but in terms of power to weight ratio, the Ducati would technically have the edge. Again, it's possible that one of these bikes is significantly better in the curves. If any of you have more info on this, I would love to hear it. But for now, I think in terms of performance, Ducati wins just by a hair. Again, this is completely preferential in terms of styling, and I'll be honest, both these bikes are so crazy <laughs> that they're actually like bordering on ugly. Like they're just so nuts, it's kind of hard to call them beautiful. But I'm going to give it to MV, especially for the Brutale 1000 RR. It's a bit less insane looking than the Rush, and I just think it's a cooler version of a Street Fighter. The Ducati Street Fighter is certainly more sleek and simple. I actually showed a picture of the Ducati Street Fighter to my wife alongside the MV Agusta Brutale 1000 RR, and she picked the Ducati because she said it's just a lot more simple and sleek. But to me, the Ducati Street Fighter is just weird looking. I don't know. All of these bikes are just kind of bordering on looking like really crazy insects. I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think for this one. Which would you take, the Street Fighter or the Dragster 1000 RR or the Rush 1000? Let us know down below in the comments which one you think is better looking. For me, it's really close, but I think I would pick the MV. All right, now when it comes to options, both the Brutale and the Rush come in two paint schemes, whereas the Street Fighter has red for the Street Fighter V4 and then red and black for the V4S. Plus, with MV, you actually get two different bikes altogether. Yes, they are on the same platform, but in terms of design, they're quite different. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to options when it comes to actually specking the bike out and configuring them and doing all the crazy stuff that you can do. But for me, MV Agusta wins when it comes to options. Now, the last thing to consider is price. And for this, Ducati has it won by a long shot, depending on how you look at it, which we can talk about in a second. But at the base price, for most, this would be enough. It is a big jump from the most expensive Street Fighter at 25K to the most expensive MV Street Fighter at $45,000. <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Now, I have seen comments going around that basically say that if you actually spec the Street Fighter out the way that you can MV Agusta's lineup and really make it look as flashy and have all the cool stuff on it, that it's actually not that crazy of a difference, that they're actually pretty close because the Ducati is pretty stripped down and when you actually build it out and make it the way most people would want to make it through Ducati, it ends up being way more expensive than 25K, whereas the MV just comes looking crazy. <laughs> So yeah, still I think overall, for the most part I would imagine that the Street Fighter still ends up being cheaper. All in all, I think it's close and it depends on what matters, and I personally would take the MVs over the Ducati Street Fighter, but that's just personal, and it's mainly about design and style, and I'm a bit of an MV Gusta simp if you haven't realized that already. But I'm going to give it a tie for this section, for the Street Fighter section. Since Ducati won two of the sections and MV won two, Ducati winning price and performance, whereas MV Gusta in this segment wins for options and design and style. Now, I was going to compare the sport bike lineup of the Ducati with the Panigale all the way up to the Superleggera, and maybe we could do that if this were BMW versus Ducati or Honda versus Ducati, but the reality is MV has a middleweight sport bike platform and Ducati doesn't and Ducati has a super sport platform, and MV Agusta just doesn't. So there really isn't anything to compare. MV Agusta's two sport bikes produce 150 horsepower, which is really impressive for 800cc triples. Seriously, it is. But Ducati's smallest sport bike is about 200cc more, and it actually produces about the same horsepower. But then as you move up the range for Ducati, like there's no comparison, it's just not even fair. These are completely different segments. We've got sort of a middleweight or upper middleweight sport bike versus is what Ducati has, which is basically all super sports and then at the far end, like hyper sports or whatever you want to call them. So where does this land us? With Ducati and MV Agusta offering an adventure, a naked and a hyper naked platform and Ducati winning the first, MV winning the second, and then basically a tie for the third segment. Well, I guess it's up to you because it comes down to preference. Does a few grand matter to you? then maybe the Street Fighter and the Monster win out, and for you, Ducati wins. Or maybe styling and options matter more, then maybe MV Agusta edges it out. 
Now, outside of these categories, there are things again like service and just availability. And these could be a huge factor for you. Maybe you're not okay with waiting for a part for a month. And in that case, Ducati probably would win. Or maybe you're somebody who doesn't care. Like you don't mind if you don't get a ride for a little bit. Motorcycling is just different for you. Some people ride their bike every day and some people like having something cool to sit in their garage that they ride every now and then. Either way, if you're deciding between these two fantastic Italian motorcycle companies, you have to do more research. Hopefully this provided sort of a solid base for what these brands offer in terms of comparison, but don't make a decision based on this unless it's for the middleweight naked bike. In that case, just go with the MV Agusta.